Hi, everybody. We're going live from Deanne Fitzpatrick Studio on Facebook and on Instagram today. And I'm right glad to have you here. I got lots to talk to you about today, like usual. I always like I always feel like I'm squashing a whole bunch into, into 30 minutes. But we're here to talk about rug hooking. So I'm going to start a little 6x6 six six today and show you how I'm uh, going to just start a little tiny piece and have a bit of fun. Might not be 6x6. Six six. We'll see. We're just going to design something. Um, I want to talk about uh, Joe's new rug because it's really beautiful. I want to talk about the webinar that's coming up. Um, I want to talk about Color School. We're going to be taking that off the website, uh, I think, by the end of this week. So if you know if you still want to join, you got a little bit of time left to join. And I want to talk about the Spring Challenge. So those are the things we're going to be talking about today. But let's start with Joe. And welcome, everybody. Are we? Is everybody here? We getting people here already? Hmm? Angela? Yeah. Okay, let's come on out and... I'll show you what I made last week, but first I want to talk to Joe. Joe is uh, working here with us, and he's been hooking rugs like crazy. And this is his waterfall rug. Look at it. Isn't it gorgeous? So tell us what kind of materials you use in this, Joe. Um, I used some of the wools that were dyed here. Yeah. I actually had a good friend gave me a 100% uh, virgin wool coat that I cut up into strips for the darker brown. Yeah. And then we actually had a pair of curtains. Cheers. <laughs> I thought, why throw, why not put cut, that in there? Pop it up a bit. Yeah, I recognize this. This is our yellow WO. From, it is. And yeah. what, a, what a great, gorgeous looking background that made. Yeah, that yellow wool actually turned up quite nicely. Yeah, on. And that's a Briggs and Little yarn. Yeah, and then uh, blue clay went in down at the bottom here. Right. Of the falls. Yeah. Then we have Color Story. Oh, yeah, that's a really ones, nice yarn. Yeah. Which was really nice for um, rocks in the spring. Yeah. Um, in the fall for the leaves of it. So. But, and um, what's this one here? Is this Merino Stream? Because that's what I was going to talk about today. No, that, no, is, that is. Um, Rasta. Oh, that's Rasta. It's Belgian chocolate. Oh, it's gorgeous. Belgian yeah. Chocolate. So, what were you thinking about when you were making this? Getting it finished. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Um, but now I was thinking of fall, um, yep. and it's a popular tourism spot, Drysdale Falls, just outside of Tadamagush in Colchester County. Yeah. Um, a lot of families go there, unfortunately, and it's, you know, it's a great place to go for tourism. Right. Um, but I like the woods aspect of it. I love right. woods in fall. What I love, I love these evergreens and how you made them. Like I just find them. I don't know. They're uh, they're almost like a pattern to them like they came out really really nice and then your your fall trees and i like how i like how you mixed over here and so what you did is almost like you created your own marks kind of everything has the same kind of rounded hand to it yeah. which says to me that you're developing style yeah, which is I, really great and i actually started from the top of the rug down yeah okay and that's how you worked on your shedding camp uh yeah it was just Philosophical, because I was thinking waterfalls with gravity. So yeah. I was going to hook oh, the gravity going right. Okay. Um, that makes sense. Because this is supposed to be the reflection of up here to a certain degree. Yeah, you got a little bit of the browns in here. So I needed to see up here first. So how are you going to do, what are you going to do with this now? You just, you, you ordered a custom frame. Ordered so, custom frame. and you can get, we can make a frame any size you want, right? If you, if you want a frame and, and so it looks a little, but you, all you got to do if it's a little bit big, it's better to have it a little big than a little small, yeah. isn't it? Because yeah, you can stretch it. Yeah, because uh, I tend not to be the person who hooks directly to the line. Yeah. Um, so there's always going to be a little odd length on one yeah. side. Yeah, and when it flattens out, you, you kind of hook, hook a bit tight, don't you? Yeah, I do. So basically all you're going to do is you're going to open up this. Let's just get one in. And stretch it. Yep. Yeah. Is that too close? Is that close enough? Oh yeah, it'd be fine because it's got kind of a higher edge here. Yeah. So yeah. And so you're gonna go around and with a big rug like this, you need to make sure that you do some stapling in the center, okay? Because if not, it's gonna flop out. So I'm just gonna put another staple in. And you gotta try and open up your wool, find your spot. That's what you don't want to happen right there. <laughs> you don't want to staple on top of the wool. But if you happen to, you can pull your loop up like this and hide the staple. Okay? Well, let's find another spot. Here's a good open spot. Joe doesn't have as many open spots as I do. There's a great spot right there. 
There we go. And you're just going to hide the staples in here. Yep. So that's basically, we do have a free course online about how to frame a hooked rug. Joe, this rug is really beautiful. You did a great job. I love it when people who work here bring in their hooked rugs. Just really, really, really well, beautiful. And I'm going to be motivated with the yarns and colors. I studio. know. There we go. So I'm, I'm going to leave you now and I'm going to go in and I'm going to start, a little, I'm going to design a little rug and we're going to play in here. So I'm just going to come on in. Come into my little studio, right here. Let's see what we got. I need to find a Sharpie marker. And remember the thing about a Sharpie marker, if you get, if, if uh, you wanna draw a straight line, just push, put your pen there and push it down. Just like that. And it'll just stay in, in the ditch, we call it. And so let's sort of do something, uh, hmm. Just gonna go six by six again. I know I'm, I'm wanting to make these six by sixes. People have been buying them off the website. I have a whole bunch of six by sixes up there now. They're not too expensive. And I think what I'm gonna do is, um, let's see. Yeah, can you clarify color school? Color school? Uh, someone says they're joining the course at the end of April. So that they can, can they still join this? Mm, uh, no, color school will be coming off the website uh, in the next day or so. We just left it up for a few days so that people who were late registering or didn't get it done. Um, but once you buy it, you can you can keep it. And then I don't know when we'll be doing color school next. I'm thinking next January we might do color school again. So uh, if you didn't, but if you, I mean, you can buy it now and you can do it anytime. You can keep it indefinitely. And we say indefinitely because, I mean, we don't have any intention of taking it down, but things happen with websites. And sometimes, you know, you, you just never know. Uh, so, you know, you can keep it as long as you want. But it's coming down off the website as of um, uh, probably uh, Friday night, I would say. So if you want to if you want to get it, we might leave it up till sometime Saturday. But uh, yeah, that'll be your last chance to buy Color School for this year. And when you buy Color School, you get inst instant access to all 50 lessons. And you can do it over two weeks, over four weeks, over six weeks. We were going to parson it out, but Angela decided that just put it all there, make it uh, available for everybody and people can work at their own pace. And I thought that was a good idea. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of make a blue landscape. I'm gonna, I, I like doing these. I'm just gonna make, I'm just gonna draw three lines, okay? On my, that's it, three lines. And I'm going to uh, outline those three lines a little bit and we might not I might not get all this done today because I want to show you some things but this is just such a simple little method of hooking I really uh, what I really want for you each of you out there is I want you to hook rugs because I and and I want you to use your creativity when you're hooking them buy a kit buy a pattern whatever it is you want but if you want to change it and if you want to mess around with it just feel free to mess around with it and and play with it it's perfectly okay so you can see I'm not staying right on the lines Are my scissors around here anywhere there we go so today I've been working we've been working really hard haven't we Angela we have we have been we've just been like going at her because we're filming for um, a course for another network in the uh, in the states a rug hooking course because our goal of course is to get as many rug hookers as we can hooking rugs and uh, so that course will be offered on another network and I'll tell you more about that later um, uh, another another website will be offering one of our courses and we'll be reaching a whole new group of people I hope uh, so now I'm going to take uh, a little bit oh look I found that a little strand and a little bit of strand of beige here and I'm going to use that uh, over here even though it's going to be a blue landscape I just want to have a little bit of other colors in there just try and we'll just use that so this is almost like an outlining color all right 
I'm going to take the navy blue here, this really dark. This is Yaya, and this is a really, a, I love Yaya. It's a soft uh, yarn. It just hooks up like a dream. Well, just watch me how soft it is. And then I'm just going to show you a little trick. I just want to show you that you can hook with your eyes closed. Just watch me. And if you do that every once in a while, and just really feel the yarn, you'll get better at rug hooking. So yeah, yeah, you can hook it with your eyes closed. That's the, that's the beauty of that yarn. So just like this. And when you do that, you can really feel that nice, soft, meditative quality to rug hooking. And you can also feel how your hands are working together and how they're kind of working in unison because that's that's what we need them to do now yeah, i kind of knew i was at the end so there we go try that oh that made me feel so rested i love that feeling okay i'm going to take it down here and then what i'm going to do next is i'm going to go over to my bin of little bits and i'm just going to see what i have in dark dark blues I'm just going to pull out anything that's kind of a dark blue or a, well, let's pull out the sky blue too because I'm going to need that for the sky. I'm just going to grab what I have here. There's another bit of dark blue. And uh, I'm going to take this one piece of black because I think that will work too. Another bit of blue. Oh, well, there's kind of a navy and a blue. Oh, and there's, oh, that's nice, kind of a blue green. Mm. And I'm going to take these little bits of light blue for my sky area. So I always, uh, these are called messy bits. You'll find them on the website. I put on bags. I put on bags. I think they're nine ninety five a bag. So every once in a while, I'll clean out my messy bits. And uh, you'll see little bags on our website. They're not always there, but I think there's some up now because Kaylee bags them up this week. And they're a mixture of, uh, of the yarns. You might get anything in there. You might get a little, little long skinny piece like this, or you might get a really skinny piece like this, or you might get a nice fat piece like this. It just depends on uh, what it is. What I do is I clean up my, clean up my bits and bring them, uh, put them in a bag for uh, you guys if you want them. So it's called Messy Bits. All right, so there's some of my blues. So I went through my bin and picked out some of my blues, okay? Now I'm going to go back to my rug. And I'm gonna take some of those dark blues and move them up here in my, these, this is kind of my back hill area, okay? You cut your wool by hand and with a cutter both. I do, do both, both, yeah, I like both. I think they they are very different from each other and they give you a different texture. So look, there's just a really subtle difference here between the black and the navy and the blue. But there is a difference. And I'm going to put some plum in here. This plum is just a blue, blue dawn purple. So we're going to leave that in here. I'm going to add that down there. Take this. I'm sorry, Dan. Did you say you can buy me messy bits at the shop? Yeah, we have messy bits here at the shop. They're nine ninety five a bag. It's a new, new thing that we started doing, um, but it works great and it helps me keep my studio. Well, all day we had a really rainy day on Sunday, and I cleaned out my studio at home, and I like to keep it organized, and so I, I don't want to. I want my own basket of messy bits, but I don't need five baskets of messy bits, so. Just gonna we just pop them in a bag um so here i am with so instead of using greens for my back hills i've just used some dark blues as you can see right just really simple i've got a couple of little bits of tan down here in the foreground i'm going to also take this blue green over here and this is a uh, this is Aussie Soft. I don't know if we have any of this shade left, but we do have lots of Aussie Soft in stock. And I'm going to double it. You don't have to double this. You can use it single. But we don't have a lot of time today. 
So I'm just going to double it and go over here and kind of hook a nice green streak through here. Kind of a tealy green, a blue, blue green. That was my favorite crayon color. What was your favorite crayon color when you guys were kids? We're using the crayon box in color school. There will be 10 more available and that's it. We're done after that. Angie's doing 10 more because we had people order after color school started. Um, but uh, the crayon box, um, there are a few left available. Uh, so in in your crayon box, didn't, you, didn't we all have like that color that we just loved? Lorna, what was your favorite color in the crayon box? Do you remember? I don't remember. You don't remember? What about you, Angela? Did you have a favorite color in the crayon box? I like the blue and purples. Oh, you like the blue and purples. I was like, my favorite color was actually called blue-green. I just loved it. Um, okay, so this is my... This I'm working with now is Rasta. One of my favorite colors. Uh, just really, really gorgeous. If you go on, I'm not sure of the name of that. But there are three different blues on there in, in the Rasta. And uh, you can see it because it's, it's pictured there. That's what it was. Thank you, Nan Becker. Blue Violet it was called. Blue Violet. Ah. So I'm going to go get my sky in here. So you could do a rug like this really big if you wanted to but you know when you're driving home on the highway and the hills are in the distance don't they always look kind of blue like when you're coming i find when i'm coming back over the cobra kid pass do they just always look really blue to me like blue green really beautiful and deep you know there's like a deepness to them Wanda Elliott says gold and silver, or gold and, yeah, gold and silver. I forgot about those in the crayon box. Oh, I forgot about gold and silver, too. Wanda Elliott had the big box. That's right. <laughs> she did. She wasn't no eight-pack girl. Wanda Elliott, you got the big box. You had the 64. You were the envy of the classroom. I got a burnt sienna and a magenta. Oh. And a peacock blue. A peacock blue, yeah. That was in a pencil, a crayon pencil. That was in a crayon pencil? Yeah. I, I wonder if you're still attracted to the colors that were your favorite colors. I wonder about that. Okay, now I'm going to take this other bit of blue. This is an alpaca. This is a studio yarn that we use. Off my scissors. This is a studio yarn that we use. Um, a studio pick. So it's like a $14.95 yarn. It's an alpaca uh, yarn. It's quite fine. So I'm going to blend that and we need a couple more blues I'm gonna have to dig in my stash over there I'm gonna have to go to my blue basket and see what I got it looks like is our crayon box sold out Dan uh, is it sold out uh, we can fix that on our website we'll fix it right after the live Angela it might be sold out but I think Joe ordered 10 more today and so we will have 10 more and I'll put that on right after we're done here you didn't add any more today, did you, Angie? I didn't, no. No, it's probably sold out for now, but we will, like Angie, I think she agreed to make 10 more. So, there's my light blue. There's my sky. Now, I've run out of that light blue, so what do I do? Well, I just find another one that's quite close, and I, I work that in there. Let's see if this will work. No, too much. Too different. I'm going to put this one in. A little bit of blue-gray got a little yellow in it almost okay so this is you're just using up your bits and pieces right okay I'm gonna put a little bit of that over here too why not all right now I'm gonna take some royal blue and I'm just gonna put that down here in the foreground And then I'm going to take some of the navy that we use up here, add that in the foreground. And then now I'm at the point where I need some more blues. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reach up into my blue basket. 
So I keep my yarn separated by a basket and I'm going to pull this one and my blue scraps. Um, Oh, these are beautiful. These are all the different Rasta blues that we have. Like, you know, oh, that's that blue is amazing. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it is amazing. Yeah, it's just gorgeous. So I'm going to take this blue here. I don't want to go too dark in the foreground. I want to go a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to take one color besides blue, and I'm going to use Merino Stream. Merino Stream is a yarn. It's 75% wool and 25% nylon. Um, the uh, Let me check that. Um, but what it does is that gives a sheen that I can't get anywhere else. Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a percentage of nylon in it. I'm not sure exactly what it is. So I'm going to add this stone color, and then I'm going to show you the other colors of Merino Stream. I'm going to take that stone color, and this is almost like, it almost looks to me like a river rock, you know? Let me put that in there. But see the sheen I get with it? Really, really beautiful. And so I'm going to put that in here. And that's my one concession to... Everything's not blue-based, right? I'm just adding one. This is kind of, well, you know, it has a bit of pink in it. It has a bit of gray in it. I mean, but it, it's certainly not blue. And that's going to be a little line. Lady has, she says, an oddball question. It's yeah. Not a, it's not an oddball question for us, but she's lining up with the moth problems around the wool. Around your wool? Well, I buy, uh, from mothcontrol.com, I buy these preventative... I don't like that in there. I'm going to take that out. I buy um, I buy these packages that uh, it's pheromones, and you can. Uh, Angie said she's got some at Canadian Tire too, and then it's preventative. And there's a pheromone and a, a sticky trap, and it catches moths. Um, that's what I use. And you just have to make sure that your wool is not, you know, bundled up in a dark place. Like just and use your wool. If you're using your wool all the time and checking it and watching it. And just not just storing it away, you won't have any problems. You you gotta be you gotta be really careful. So I'm gonna take this little bit of blue cloth right here because we do use lots of cloth still. And I'm gonna put that in here. So it's not an oddball question. It's something that you have to be really careful about and uh, conscientious of. When I was a kid, my mom used to put mothballs in drawers. Is That's that That's right. People still do use mothballs. They have a very strong smell. Yes. Uh, but uh, So not everybody likes them because of that. But I'm going to take this, just to balance the cloth a little bit, I'm just going to take it and move it over here as well. So there we go. And there is my little blue landscape. And if you guys want to come over and look at it from this side so they can see the whole thing, that would be great. And there's my little blue landscape. Yeah, it's you really want to see your rug sweet. Right on the back side when they're finished. On their back side, we can show her the back side of the rug. I'm going to show, I'll show them the rugs I made last week. We're going to be turning them into pillows. But um, so there we go. That's that's a great lesson for you today. Um, I also want to talk to you about um, the webinar is April 17th. Um, I know it's a conflict with some other things and people have all kinds of things going on. And I'm sorry about that. But uh, that is the date of the webinar. We will try and record it, eh, Angela? Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll probably have to record it in two parts or three parts or just record the parts where I'm speaking. I don't know. We'll figure it out um, because we're going to just sort of, I don't know, we're leaving it running all day or how we're going to do it exactly. But we are. Uh, we do have a good group of people signed up for it, and we're going to be talking about the caribou. And we also have a package now uh, on there for the caribou, a neutrals package, and it has some velvet in it. For so, and we're going to talk about we're going to talk a lot about design and using the caribou template to design. Um, so that is on April 17th, and you can still sign up for it. Color School is going off the website sometime this weekend, and it won't be available again till next year. And the spring challenge. Kathy has a spring challenge on Wild with Wool to make spring-inspired rugs. And they are uh, there are over 50 people who have entered so far. And there's going to be a prize. It's going to be a random draw. So be sure to enter your rug if you're hooking a spring rug. 
and we are like i said we're filming a course for a network i'll let you know more about that it'll be available in the summer and we saw joe's rug i want to show you this beautiful yarn this is the merino stream and i just want to show you the colors that it comes in this is our royal blue and that's what i used here in this river rock you can see it has a nice sheen um and i have a, a really golden like buttercup yellow i'm not sure of the names of these you'll have to go on and just google merino stream on the website got this purple because kaylee names them all got a blue and i ordered this because i wanted something that was kind of the color of pei sand so and and the earth at the at Amher shore so this is um these are all the colors i love red in this just so this is a yarn that i've used for years and um, it's hand dyed. Look at that. Just gorgeous. And then we've got this pinky red. Got the line. And we've got this color here. So I'm just going to show you all of them together. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Are they not gorgeous? Do you know how to skein a yarn? You take your, you take your yarn. I'm not an expert skeiner. And you give it a twist. And you go under, over, and tie it together. Come on out. I'm going to show you one more thing. Deanne, what's the name of the webinar? Uh, it's, uh, design. I think it's Color Design Creativity, Hooking the Caribou or something. It's on the homepage. It's on, it's on our homepage. Mm -hmm. Is it, no, is it on our homepage or Color School on the homepage? No, I think it's. No, I don't think it is. I think Color School is on the homepage. So if you go under online courses, it's right there. It's right at, it's right under Color School on online courses. And there's still room if you want to join us. These are what I was working on last week. I'm just going to show you. And these are going to be created into, into pillows, I think. But they're, they're looking, they came out pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with them. I, I like what happened to them. And, oh, I, oh, you want to see the back? You want to see the back? There you go. There's the back. Yeah. Oh, there's a little spot. There's a holiday in the back. They call that a holiday. So I just have to go in and put a little, put a little wool in there. And that's it for today, folks. That's everything. That's all I got. I got a little blue landscape for you that I hooked up. And um, I got uh, these, these rugs are all done. That was what I was working on last week. I got the marine stream and... Uh, Wanted to let you know about the color school going off the website that I will go on right away and fix up the crayon box. That's what I'm supposed to do. And um, the spring challenge is on Wild with Wool. If you're not aware with Wild with Wool, it's our Facebook page. And there's over 8,500 members on our Facebook uh, Wild with Wool page on our Facebook group. And fifth, over 50 of them have put up a rug for the spring challenge. When is it close? Uh, the spring challenge, I think it's up for like six or eight weeks. I think it's, yeah, it's quite a while. Yeah. Anybody got a, any questions before we sign off for today? What was the name of that blue right here? That blue yarn? This is a blue, this is Rasta. And right. there's, there's uh, three different shades of blue Rasta on the website. And I'm not sure of the actual, actual names of each one. But yeah, there are three, but you can see the images there. That was a Merino stream. And that's a merino stream, it's called, and it's really beautiful if you want a, want a nice soft yarn to hook with. The other thing I want to tell you is that when you're hooking with soft yarns and squishy yarns like that, it's a lot easier to pull them up, and it's, it's a lot easier on your hands when you're hooking with those soft yarns. So think about that. All right, that's it for this week. Facebook Live, Deanne Fitzpatrick Studio. Thanks to Lorna. Thanks to Angela. And we had over 10,000 people view last week. So you know what I'm telling you is I'm telling you to share. Because when you share rug hooking with someone, you never know what you're sharing with them. You could be sharing friendship. You could be sharing love. You could be sharing community. You could be sharing solace, meditation. It has so many good qualities. Thank you. See ya. See you next week.